Before that, our Saturday stack closes by asking, where on earth? This is a planetarium, a showplace of the stars. From the Big Bang to the most exotic stars, the cosmos in microcosm, from the comfort of a theatre seat. The London Planetarium in England is one of the most popular in the world. As the effigy of Albert Einstein testifies, this is a famous spot. Together with Edmund Halley, the astronomer, they survey the patrons. For the London Planetarium runs in conjunction with the waxworks of Madame Tussauds. Typically of planetaria, a space and astronomy hall complements the theatre. Information as entertainment and none the worse for that. Facts and figures at your interactive fingertips. This is a classic planetarium projector, an electromechanical masterpiece developed by Zeiss in Germany in the early 1920s. It comprises clusters of small projectors. As pinpoints of light, each cluster reproduces a segment of the sky on the planetarium dome. Dubbed the wonder of Jena after the city of its origin, the very function of the machine became a star turn. As it whirs and rotates, the projector can simulate the stars and their movements as seen from anywhere on Earth. After 70 years, most planetaria still use a projector of this basic design. A latest version employs fiber optics a refinement to ensure the most accurate reproduction of the night sky. Even so, the projection achieved is still two-dimensional, the stars in motion across the heavens. It's a limitation of the electromechanical projector, however good. Enter the special effects department. To put the oomph into star shows, the best planetaria have an array of auxiliary projection systems. Slides, video, video disc, all synchronized with the main Starball projector. The resulting shows can be an astronomical delight. And if you can't make it to a planetarium, there's always the carry away version. A box containing the projection system and for the audience, the fun of a light-proof inflatable dome. Ideal for schools or anyone remote from a city venue. This city venue is American, the Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a planetarium for the 21st century. At its heart is a new projection system, it works like a television tube. Instead of the star ball, a silent and unobtrusive lens throws a cathode ray image, a picture with an extra dimension. The system is called Digistar. It was developed in Salt Lake City by a company specializing in computer simulation. But Digistar is only as good as its programs. Like a star ball, it can accurately reproduce the night sky. Its advantage is this, the ability to move through space and through time, how the cosmos was and how it will be. Digistar is capable of any dot or line rendering 
whether it be a star field or shuttle in Earth orbit, setting aloft the Hubble Space Telescope. Digistar, with special effects and a good producer, can transport you to that final frontier. Seville, Spain, to a planetarium with an extra ingredient. During the six months of Expo 92, this theatre packed in record-breaking audiences. They were served a cosmic cocktail, high-resolution TV graphics combined with star fields and the movement of Digistar. The computer renderings offered what Digistar couldn't, solid images in colour. Patrons see them on film and television, so why not on the planetarium dome? Plus, of course, the excitement of all enveloping, wraparound sound and vision. And the ultimate trip into a black hole. The Seville system has been adopted by a new planetarium in Stockholm, Sweden. As with many planetaria now, it's a steeply raked theatre with a tilted dome. It can also double as a big screen cinema. A gigantic image is thrown onto the dome by an Omnimax film projector. It slides into place from beneath the audience. Visit the planetarium nearest you. A good astronomical picture is worth a thousand words. For a more tangible venue, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. A bus ride will take you past the most famous launch sites in the history of American rocketry. Including, of course, the ongoing program of Space Shuttle. Every few months, a shuttle lifts off from this pad. In front of Shuttle's assembly building, the enormity of the famous Saturn V rocket. Laid out stage by stage, it was this Saturn series which carried men to the moon. Where once Saturn was built, NASA's vertical assembly building now sees Shuttle gently rolling towards the launch site. If you hit the right day, you can watch a blast off 15 kilometers from the pad. And with things freed up in the former Soviet Union, a Russian launch like this can now be viewed in Kazakhstan. For history buffs, there's the wonder of Stonehenge, a megalithic observatory in England. And further back, the crater punched by a meteor in Arizona 25,000 years ago. In the Australian outback, the fossil of an even older meteor crater at Gosses Bluff. Most astronomical institutions have visitor centers, like this observatory in New Mexico, the radio dishes of the very large array. In England, at the radio telescopes of Jodrell Bank, you can operate your own dish and visit a planetarium. Optical observatories like Kitt Peak, Arizona, welcome visitors. So too the Anglo-Australian Observatory in New South Wales. But for aspiring astronauts, this is the place. Space Camp. A vacation where for a few days you can live, eat and sleep as a space person. And it's not just for kids. Adults can maneuver propulsion units and learn the basics of space science. In America, there are highly successful space camps in Florida and here in Alabama. Now the Russians are following suit. From underwater spacewalks to piloting the shuttle, a chance to experience the nuts and bolts of working in space the thrill of shutting the airlock, a job well done. Another day in the life of an orbiting astronaut.
Next on Discovery, a look at some of the wheels of gold, the classic cars bought in the hope that their value will appreciate.